As one of New York's most creative neighborhoods, the Lower East Side is home to some of the city's best artists, martial artists included. The Wu-Tang Physical Culture Association currently takes up shop in an acupuncture center north of Chinatown, but has been part of the fabric of the Lower East Side since the 70s. Its staying power is as much due to their distinct yet traditional attitudes towards the internal martial arts as it is to the personalities of the couple who run it, Frank Allen and Tina Zhang. When you use a shoulder, you probably, it's already very, very close to someone. You're in fighting scene, in whatever you do. This is Tina Zhang, who teaches Wu-style Tai Chi Chuan at the Wu-Tang PCA. Of the Chinese internal martial arts, Tai Chi Chuan is the most well-known. Although its slow pace and focus on breathing have led many Westerners to practice it as a health system, when taught with a traditional focus, Tai Chi can still be used in the same manner as it was used by the Qing Royal Guards. Um, that's a, from traditional training. It's no difference from any kind of Kung Fu training to me. So Tai Chi is about routine training. You train your foot, you train your stance, you train your power. The power is from the internal, from the inside of the body. So you train day by day, one move each time. You want to be really precise that give you the postures, give you the correct functional move, functional motion, then you can just use these principles to apply in a fighting. Functional means each Tai Chi movement or postures has a purpose of its own applications. And when you learn how to use them, that's, that's, that's what I mean, functional. Ready? Each and every movement of each and every form has a martial purpose. And although people may not be training it to be able to become Tai Chi fighters, if you know the purpose of the movement, the movements get much more precise. This is Frank Allen, the founder of the Wu-Tang Physical Culture Association and Tina's partner in teaching and in life. And you end up moving in the exact manner and positioning as it was meant to be, which in turn will kick in the health benefits. Because it's were originally fighting arts that somebody discovered that the same thing that gave their fighters speed and stamina and strength also made them healthy. So the basic training is what does that. So the more precise you get into your fundamental basic training, the more you get both aspects of your martial arts, the health and the martial aspects. Frank teaches Bagua Zhang at the Wu-Tang PCA and has more than 30 years of teaching and fighting experience. Bagua is a circular style, whose martial applications are as complex as its internal and philosophical aspects. Frank is a rare teacher in America because he focuses on all these aspects together. Bagua I teach a little differently in that I try and teach all the aspects of Bagua. Starting from the basic fundamentals of your posture, breathing, vision, mindset, and various movement principles, unity of movement, continuity of flow, to the classical forms, to be able to do the classical forms correctly, and to know the functionality, the movements and purposes of each and every movement. Then you learn to take a line of joints, say a hand, shoulder, spine, hip, leg, foot, compress all the joints at once and release them which creates short-range internal hydraulic compression power. Agua is unique in that it's the only martial art that was based on an ancient energy and meditation system. Other martial arts with a meditative aspect started as fighting arts and then somebody decided by adding meditation to the training that they could remove fear and the resulting hesitation from their fighters. Bagua Zhang is the only one where the founder, Dung Hai Chuan, took an ancient meditation energy art moving I Ching system and evolved it into a fighting art, or as I'm fond of saying, probably from a Taoist monk, abbot, or hermit's point of view, took an amazing high-level energy and meditation system and devolved it into a way to kick the crap out of people, but it's a very efficient way to do that. Internal martial arts are also notable for their philosophical root. Taiji takes as its core principle the idea of the yin and yang, and centers its movements around the flowing between full and empty. Bagua comes from a growth of that philosophy. If the yin-yang symbol is composed of two parts, one empty and one complete, 
The trigram of the Bagua are composed of three parts varying in combination of the yin and yang. The eight variations of these parts make up the Bagua symbol, a visual representation of the change in nature. The earliest source of the philosophy behind Taiji and Bagua is the I Ching, a book dated to either the 3rd or 2nd century BCE. I Ching loosely translates to the Book of Changes, a fitting title as at its core the book's philosophy is that change is the only constant. Bagua is a moving I Ching, which in its highest levels becomes a study of the phenomenon of change and a way to study the I Ching not just intellectually, the way most people do from the book, but also physically and energetically, by physically and energetically manifesting the change patterns which the I Ching is all about. I wasn't interested in learning martial arts at all, and then uh, the Bagua interested me as a way of uh, using the, uh, you know, the internal stuff that we learned, you know, like the ex expand and the compress stuff, you know, and uh, so that's how I got into boxing. Like the I Ching, the only constant in Frank and Tina's life is change. Frank moved to the Lower East Side after his tour in the army. Attracted by the gritty reality of the New York neighborhood, he never left. I used to say in Alphabet City in those days what you need to do was to have develop an attitude and a look that said I've only got five dollars to my name and I'll kill you to keep it. Alphabet City refers to an area of Manhattan's Lower East Side. Although safe now, the area used to be a dangerous place for any but the toughest New Yorkers. The upside to the danger, however, was that the cheap rent and liberal attitude helped the area's artists flourish. It was within this confluence of danger and creativity that Frank began to study the internal martial arts with his first teacher, Jan the Iron Man Lang. Jan Lang was an artist, musician, filmmaker, and is very much into teaching martial arts as an art, that it should be an art form. Then in 1975, uh, B.P. Chan came to town, and Jan took his whole class up to start studying with B.P. Chan, who was the first person, at least in this area, I'm pretty sure on the East Coast, to teach Bagua and Xing Yi to non-Chinese. After meeting with B.P. Chan in 1975, Frank's course as a martial artist was set. Four years later, he opened up the first iteration of the Wu-Tang Physical Culture Association in his home, and later opened the school he would inhabit for 30 years. When I first started studying with Frank, it really wasn't a martial arts school, it was a private martial arts club. And the only way you got to join or come was if you were invited by another member. So our classes would be not very regimented the way they are now. We would come, sip coffee, eat donuts and other pastries, and talk for a long time before we'd actually get up and practice. And the joke was, we're not a martial arts school, we're a history club with a fighting problem. That famous school went on to become a fixture in the martial arts community of the 80s and 90s, contending in every tournament and demonstrating throughout the city. Ten years later, in 1989, another important event in the Wu-Tang PCA's history would occur. 1989 would be Tina Jong's first year in America. When I first came to America, it was 1989. I was a student, just like everybody else, like all immigrants to this country, especially from China. You know, you, you just work, you study, and you make your life. You make your uh, future. You wish you make a better life for your kids. Just like that, very simple immigrant's mind. As a child growing up in China, Tina had studied contemporary wushu. Because of the times, however, she wouldn't get the chance to delve into the deeper aspects while living in China. Upon arriving to America, Tina felt as though her martial arts days were behind her. After she'd settled in, however, a desire to pursue her childhood passions brought her to study martial arts with Frank Allen. Although she hadn't practiced in years, Tina quickly became a skilled fighter, taking down women twice her size at tournaments. The skill and dedication she found at Frank's school rekindled her love of Kung Fu and helped kindle their own relationship. Frank and Tina have been together for more than 20 years now, and their martial arts have flourished as a part of it, leading them to not only become great teachers, but authors of several books on history and practice of the styles they teach. Frank and Tina are innovators as well, who have brought their creativity to the styles that they practice. One example of which is boxing for health. An idea of Frank's wherein the internal principles of power generation are used in boxing. This innovative method to improve his students' training is indicative of the way Frank and Tina approach teaching. They know the methods and techniques, but what a student gains is entirely up to the student themselves.
If they're there for fighting, if they're there for health, if they're there for creative development, I'm trying to help them develop into whatever they want. And if they stay long enough, we find the wants tend to change. Tai Chi practice or eternal martial arts practice open their heart, they change their characters. We're going to do Stick around to learn some Kung Fu after the break. Strike. Step. So in Wu style Tai Chi, there's a um, posture called part horse's man. From the guard position into a chopping down. Defense, step, and step. Basically, fair lady, work on the shadow, deal with a high punch or a hammer on your head. High and strike right away. In Wu style Tai Chi, there's a posture called lotus kick, just like a lotus. So it opens up, but it's in the short distance you throw the kick. If someone just run into you, it's really short distance, you can just kick. Use the back of the leg to kick on somebody's back. Bagua has specific strikes that are unique to Bagua itself. The first one is a blind over the head strike, which coils the strike out of the way and comes blind over the head and strikes down. We're going to do a monkey palm strike, which involves using V hands that first hit the trachea and then widen out and cut into the carotids. And it is often combined with a knee strike. This is using a Bagua deflection, which as far as we know, no one else uses, which is coming up underneath, dropping so that he continues forward and circling around, coming into his throat. This technique uses a basic Bagua posture called Bear Puts Forth Its Paw. We continue with a basic upward palm strike and a similar back break throw to the previous technique. <laughs> 